Hello all you incredible people. Welcome back. Thank you for liking and subscribing and following along this epic ride that Gwen and I are sharing with you guys. We love you. We appreciate you. Um, I'm a little winded. I just pumped up a couple kites really fast. Um, today we got a super exciting gift today because it's something that's controversial I would say. It's for sure dangerous. We don't recommend it. But a lot of people always ask, how is this done? And today we're gonna to give you that answer and show and break it down for you to understand how it really works and how to get these incredible hang time rides, you know, over minutes long on a kite. I'm gonna go over it crystal clear. It is 100% dangerous. I do not recommend this. I think it is 100% dangerous. <laughs> and uh, have I emphasized that enough? It's definitely for professionals. Is even that? It's it's calculated on. I can be my skill 100% calculated. I know I won't screw up. I can't necessarily say there's a percentage of gear that could malfunction or there's a lot of things that literally you can't be 100% in control. Whether it's gear, whether it's uh, wind gusts, whether it's there's a lot of variables. So when you do this, obviously we don't recommend it. Um, just know there's a risk 100%. Um, so let's break it down. So 12 meter switchblade. This is the smallest kite I would ever use to fly. One, because the 12 is big, but it's not super big. You want big. Big is slow, stable. It's more of a canopy. So it's more of a, a wing, more of a paraglider for you to fly. So 12 would be the smallest I would ever use. I would never go smaller. I'd never fly with anything smaller because it just gets too fast and can get you out of control. So 12 and up is what I use. Um, we have a 14 Aviate as well. 14 switchblades like my go-to all the time. Um, so always you want a bigger kite because that's more stable, more safe, more lift. Uh, a lot of things, you have more canopy. So it's safe. So long story short, we're sitting here on the beach. We have directly straight on shore winds, which here it's east, northeast, east winds. Um, we have some buildings behind us here and what's happening is the wind is hitting it and it's going up and it's creating a lift. And so what's happening, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna put a kite up and I, what I'm trying to do is most lift starts and I could be wrong, but it's about three quarters of, uh, of a way up a building is where that, where that lift you can get in where it starts to move up. Now, um, I could be wrong with that distance, but I know it's a little ways up. If you walk right to the base of the building, you literally will probably feel no wind if it's straight on shore. But as you go higher, you'll feel an updraft because that wind bent and it's going up. So really what we're trying to do is get our kite in a little bit of that uplift and that keeps you flying and it actually climbs you backwards into the wind. Now everybody thinks I'm going, how is Damien flying straight into the ocean? Because the wind's blowing straight on shore. Well, in theory, what you don't see is that that wind is bending. So when it bends, now my kite actually Instead of when I hold my kite up right next to the building, the kite actually wants to go out in front of me over like out behind me because the lift is bending it. So that means when I fly, I actually fly in an angle back into the wind. But in theory, that wind is bent. So hopefully that made sense. Um, if not, feel free to leave a comment and hopefully we can get back to it. But I guess what I'm trying to say is whenever you see like a surfer riding down a wave, you'll see that wind kind of going right up that wave. It's the same thing. That wind bends up. So what happens is it creates, instead of the wind blowing this way, that wind turns to vertical. So that means if you put a kite up right there, your kite's gonna be out this way. It's not gonna be this, it's gonna be. So that's how this, this happens. This is how you soar off dunes or you soar or you paraglide. This is paragliding. This is an epic day for paragliding, but obviously using a kite is more dangerous because you only have four lines versus a paraglider's meant to do this meant to have a lot of load on these canopies, um, but you can still use a kite. We don't recommend it, 100% dangerous. Just emphasize that, but what we're trying to do is just share how, it's, how it works and how it's, how it's done. Uh, safest is to not ever do it. Second safest is to not ever do it. Third safest would be to wear body bag, helmet, everything, but start really small and start with little jumps. I don't even know why I'm trying to tell you guys how to do this. We don't recommend it, so don't do this. We're just gonna share with you how it works. <laughs> All right. So, leash or no leash, kinda doesn't matter. Don't screw up. I don't know if you can notice, but if I get close to the dune, 
That kite is trying to overfly me and go over my head. That's what it's trying to do. Now the closer I get, it's going to get even worse. So I want to keep this kite moving as I work my way up. And I work my way using that kite. And then we go for a ride. So like a good theory about how this works is, you know, obviously I've mentioned the air goes up the building, so it creates a different angle. So if I can steer the kite or even back the kite up closer to the top of that building, when I let off and it surges, it's actually almost like hot launching on normal windy day because that kite's going to surge through that now angle and it's going to create that acceleration of lift to pull you up and out. Now, if I leave it, I'll just accelerate at the angle of that lift, the building, and I'll plummet into the ground. But if I keep the kite moving, I ride that lift until that lift band ends to the normal wind on the beach. Then you go to the normal onshore wind where you can just ride normally. So if you've ever been kiting or even winging and you ride close to buildings, you may actually feel that the wind got lighter. What's happening is there's a buffer against those buildings that's, that's slowing the wind down because there's a pressure against itself out into the ocean. Um, so you feel like it's a little bit lighter, but what's actually happening is that wind's starting to slowly compress against the buildings and go up. So it feels like it's less, but everything's kind of starting to move up. So uh, it is less, but it's, um, that up will be not where you're gonna catch it, but um, if you've ever had that feeling, that's why. So. Like, you know, like we said, look, we make videos here to inspire, to help, to inform, but this video for sure is not to try. It's what, how it's done. And, um, you know, safety first for sure. Um, and um, look, it's, it's an exciting sport that goes to every extreme level. And, um, you know, parts of my career, I definitely took it there, um, but I would not recommend it. And uh, go winging. Kiting, have fun for sure. Thank you guys so much. Um, like and subscribe, leave your comments. Please don't leave any negative comments. We know we could get them here. This is just to inform people, highly don't recommend this. And not even professionals only. It, it's, there's a chance anything could go wrong. Um, but that's kind of how it works in a nutshell. And um, Gwen's gonna go give it a shot. Just kidding. <laughs> Gwen is like literally like, not a chance, won't try it. Too dangerous, not good for you. Um, so we love you guys. Again, thank you so much. Uh, let's see if we can hit 10K. All right, guys. Thank you.